Why don't we do this? When I point at you, you tell me your name, and if you have any special skills or hidden talents, favorite sex positions. All right, who, who, who wants to go first? Yes, underwear as outerwear girl. Hit me. Hi, I'm Melanie Rose. Call me Mel Rose. And my special skill is that I'm not fucking boring. Like, I can wake up in the morning with absolutely nothing to do and just be in a Van Halen video by the end of the day. Um, oh, also, uh, any position with my legs over my head. Okay, I dig it. I like the whole please objectify me vibe. Thank you. Tremendous. Jackie, turn on. Jackie, 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 Jackie. Hi. been here before you know that my favorite new show is glow that i watched it all in a day i love this show i didn't know you did not know you well you've never been here before that's true that is true guys so far so good am i right you're killing it Jack. panicking all right congratulations on the show thank you everybody loves it including me i you know i watched it because the weekend it came out on twitter everybody was raving about it and going crazy Congratulations. What did you, you, did you expect that when you were shooting it, when you were getting the scripts? Did you recognize that it was going really well, that it was a good show? Yep. Really? What if that was this whole interview? Just, mm-hmm. I've done that before, don't oh, With worry. crickets? Oh, people are the worst. No, I'll, I'll talk to way too I much. Can, I can pull questions out of thin air, don't worry. Oh, you want to test me, we can do 25 minutes. Oh, I will you. exhaust these people. Um, so, the audition process was crazy because there was a pilot and I read it, but then, you know, a lot of the girls aren't that much in the pilot because you're just first getting to meet them all. And a pilot is so difficult because you have to pack so much information in such a short time, make people want to continue watching. And so most of us really get more of our, like who we are in episode two. But for the audition process, there were just sort of pages for us to read. And they had this character that was like this little sort of crazy party girl and they thought I might be right for. And so I ended up reading pages for that that, weren't, that never ended up in the show. So I knew the pilot was amazing, but I wasn't 100% sure what I was really doing. And then I forgot there were other people here. <laughs> was that weird? I was like giving you guys my back. Um, oh, water, just one second. <sighs> Don't you feel it's classy when people are in interviews and drink water? Oh. It makes the whole thing feel a little dignified, right? Somehow, and this is dating myself, but somehow I just feel Dennis Millery when I do it. I'm just like, I need water. It's like, oh, you don't no. really need water. You just want to do something right now. A name that will not be mentioned on this stage. Why? He was a dick here? No. I, oh, okay, I'm, not, I'm not a fan. Just and Henry Rawl. I get you. I get you. That's just like, he's a dick. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Duh. Um, we can pull up a few Fox News clips and find I'm out. I'm actually all set. Dick. I'm actually all set. Um, gotta go. And <laughs> then just leave. Um, yeah, so ultimately, when we started reading, because we would get each episode like a couple days before we'd shoot. So we'd be shooting the pilot and then we would get, you know, the last day of shooting the pilot or a day before we would get episode two. And then I was like, oh my crickets, I'm really in episode two. I am on this show. You're really the first supporting character that they kind of start developing a little bit fat, a little, a little and bit And the only so. ketchup miscarriage in the whole season. <laughs> Could you imagine they did that twice? I think we should have another girl catch up out of her vagina. Um, yeah, it was, I felt really, really lucky when I read that episode because I, you know, it's a cool thing. You know, you're on a show. You don't know what, you're, what it's going to be. You don't get episodes one through ten when you get the job. I mean, you don't get to read them, rather. So you really don't know. And then I got episode two, and I was like, oh, this is so tight. So. And then I feel like what they did with your character as well is they sort of developed you as a villain initially, like a kind of social villain amongst them. Yeah. And then as they peeled back layers for your character throughout the season, you become a bit warmer, a bit more interesting, and kind of uh, less of a villain for everybody. Yeah, you know, I watched... I got to see a couple of the episodes, like, right before they came out. Um, and I had a moment of, like... Oh my God, no one's gonna like me. <laughs> like, uh oh. Um, and I was really happy to see over the course of the season that I think she definitely does lighten up. But I don't know, I thought, I think it's kind of like I just, I, I, I hearken back to what Mark says on Glow, which is the devil gets all the best lines, yeah. you know? And I think it's really, even my speaking voice alone, like, nice, nice things don't sound right coming out of this face, you know? <laughs> Just, that's not how it works. You tried in the green room with me when oh, you first met me. Oh, it went terribly. It was I wonderful. did try in the green room. He walks in and I go, cute person. 
but I may have said it with a question mark. So he was like, was that a question? And I was like, I'm blowing it. No, I, I, I was totally stumped at first. <sighs> it was like cute person. I was like, thank you. I, I was I, guys. And immediately I was like, I regret it. I'm sorry. I was trying to compliment you. And I thank I you. I loved it. It was a wonderful compliment. Great. So wait, let's let's talk about uh, a little bit more about your character on Glow and about okay. actually doing a show where it's such an ensemble cast. It really, everybody that's cast in the show has to be kind of fun to work with and nice to be oh, around because the majority of your scenes are with everybody. You're rarely alone. I mean, I think, except with the exception of maybe these two characters and Mark, everybody is sort of in scenes together. So they have to cast people who want to work with each other. You know, they they didn't, I don't think that was what anybody did on purpose because we didn't know each other beforehand. So it wasn't like you could sit there and put all 14 of us in a room and be like, oh, A doesn't like B, B doesn't like C. Like there's no way, there's no mathematical equation to make 14 crazy bitches like each other. 14 crazy bitches like each other? Yeah. Yeah, isn't that crazy? Any, was there ever any drama? I mean, sure, but like, not really. Like at the same time, like there were moments where I was like, oh, you're annoying me. But like, that's how I feel to my brothers or my whoever or my best friends where there's, and I mean, I can't imagine there was ever a time I annoyed anyone <laughs> ever. That also has to be the I case. I looked in every camera. I tried to look in every camera. I, I tried, I tried. Do you want to do like a cut to each camera? Like I feel we go like here? <laughs> okay, yeah. We go here? Yes, I never annoyed anyone. I see red on that one, but then I'm pointing here, and I don't see it's changing to this one to go red. I notice it's also so not. Clearly, oh, it's little eye just turned to me. There it is. So we, which one's one? Three? We're on four, are we on two? We just run out of time. That's it. it. This is the like whole interview. Just me trying to. By pointing. If I'm I pointing start looking at things that clearly aren't cameras. To four. They're obviously not listening to you. I know. What the fuck, guys? Come on. Like, it's, they're not. Just stop it. Do you know what I mean? Oh, hi. There, a person at that table. There's really a director downstairs <gasps> who is like, you will not be the director of this. I am yeah, the director yeah, of this. Knock it off. Also, like, this is your shot, but like, also, you know what I mean? It could also be mine. <laughs> Take it. Take it. Give it to her. Give that her the felt, shot. That felt exactly right. That was good. Thank you. That was, it was a nice. Oh, cool. Sort of a. Sort of a. Ouch, ouch, everything hurts. Yeah, okay, good. I don't do these more. <laughs> <Yeah. often. laughs> Same. Uh, so, what was, so the audition process for Glow, you are, you're reading epic pages that aren't necessarily... Yeah, well, or they are, what they but... tell you about the character? So, um, you know, you get a breakdown, and I think at first when girls were trying out, they weren't 100% sure who was going to do what. Like, I didn't try out for Sheila the She-Wolf, but I was, like, reading... Oh, so I read... Jenny the cheerleader, I read Ruth a little, I read Melrose a little. I think those were the only, I think I read three or four characters. You were like, and they were like, like an actress that a casting director brought in and was like, she is really great, you need to find a place, like let's try to find a place for her to, in the show. Let's yeah. try to, and I think with Glow, they were, I mean, that's what Genji and, and Liz and Carly, and that's what this team does. Right, that's kind like of what they're, they did with Orange, yeah. Yeah, they're just like, oh, a, that's an interesting ish person. And then if we can find a place for her, cool. And if we can't, we'll hopefully work with her in the future. And that's sort of how your entire career goes until you get the job, until finally you do fit in a place. Now, have you guys already started shooting the second season? We have not. Oh. We, we don't have an official pickup. We're really hopeful, but we don't. Yeah, we don't, no one has told me that really? they're, yeah. Oh, wow. But I also like, you know, you hear, you hear little murmurings, but everybody tweet about it. That'll help. <laughs> you, you, mean, you 27 people are going to get us picked up for a second season. No pressure. I can't imagine that this, that, this, that this isn't going to get picked up. For all, I, for all I know, for all I can tell, <laughs> it's a hit. But I don't really know what a hit on Netflix looks like I anymore. I don't either. Other than... My friends tell me about it. I don't it. know what a hit on anything looks like either because shows get second and third seasons on network now yeah. and they don't, they don't have a million viewers. So I don't, I don't know what goes on. It's like a very... You've got second and third seasons and I'm like, who? Who? Who well, watched it's a very that? Interesting, it's a really interesting time in television. It's super exciting. There's so much content. So there's so much competition to get people to watch your show, care about your show. So there's more opportunity for actors because there's more shows, but also... The pie is getting thin. The pieces are getting thinned out so much because there's so much content. So I think we're also we're all really hopeful. And again, I hear murmurings, but 
you know, I'll Hell, come back and this exact same room of people will gather together and we'll all high five when we get a second season. If Hell on Wheels on AMC can get four seasons, I, I think Glow on Netflix can get what at I'm least gonna two. What I'm going to tell you to um, just further how correct you are is I don't know what that is. Exactly. Yeah. That's what I mean. I never met a person who saw that show and every year it'd be like, two more seasons. No, you're like, wait, you're picking up two at a time? I keep having a moment where I'm holding this mic too close and so I'm just like, I feel like it's covering my whole face. And then I I'm think like, it's, it's better like this. Oh my so goodness. If you want to sit like this. Are you the rest ready of to the, rumble? Yeah. Oh my god. Rest of the interview reference. like this. How cute, perfect. Uh, you have another project that you just finished shooting, or you finished shooting a while back, yeah. right? Where you get to play the amazing Gilda Radner. What it's is that incredible. a lot of pressure? How do you like what is that like playing See, a legend know, like that? Uh, I love it's so interesting that people, certain people don't know who Gilda Radner is because she's one of my personal heroes. And she's the first person to ever be on Saturday Night Live. She was the first cast member, not just first woman, the first cast member. Lauren was making the show and he was like, You, Gilda. And so I watched her, all of her greatest hits tapes and everything growing up and was completely obsessed with her. And it's interesting to be in a time when people don't necessarily know who she is. I do stand up and I'll do a show and they'll be like, Hey, do you want to met me to mention some credits? And I'm like, That's always awkward. And you're like, I don't know. I guess you could say glow and playing Gilda Radner and they're like okay and they're like Jackie Tone from Glow and playing Gilda Krafner like they have no idea who she is or how to well, say her comedy, name you don't know who Gilda no idea That's so weird. it's so weird generally boys well it's so strange to me whenever you're part of any kind of uh creative industry and it doesn't seem like the people around you have interest in like historical aspects That's of crazy. that like as but a I mean I think a lot of the time I mean, that was a longer time ago, and I think they know who Aykroyd and Bill Murray and Chevy are, and I think... Maybe not Chevy anymore. <laughs> I feel like they still know who Chevy is, even if they... I mean, Maybe just as the they didn't asshole. For, yeah, they didn't forget who he is, just because he acted a little crazy, a lot, so much, so, so crazy. Um, but yeah, no, uh, yeah, I feel... Yeah, so anyway, I played, I, I auditioned for this Gilda thing, and they, it was the craziest thing ever. Um, and Joel McHale actually plays Chevy, and Seth Green plays Christopher Guest. Um, and it's about the creation of National Lampoon. And I think what we now think of National Lampoon is like... Um, Van Wilder. Van Wilder. But back in the day, it was Christmas Vacation, and it was... I suppose I should have a was, better reference than Van Wilder, because that's no, at but, least the beginning of Ryan Reynolds' career. So we could say National Lampoon's Van Wilder Part 4, four is, which is what yeah. National Lampoon's is now. Close getting a second season. I mean, Van Wilder Part 4. Okay, so... I don't even think he plays Van Wilder anymore. I think oh, the, a different person? I think it's about the guy from the real world that was in the original. Puck? Stop. No, Who? I think, I think his name's... I'm getting excited. T Tack or Tuck. I said Puck and you said Tack. Everything's great. It's something like that. We're he both, has, like, a, we're both 100, by the way. Does anyone know who I'm talking about from Van Wilder? Yo, know, fuck you guys. <laughs> Did you say fuck you guys? Yeah. I said Google it. I gotta go. We're so angry. But um, for that audition, so it takes place before Saturday Night Live um, and also through, but because it's about National Lampoon and not SNL, it's Gilda and Belushi and Chevy and Christopher Guest and Bill Murray all before. Who plays Murray? John Daly. Oh, wow. Yes. And so, and he, he kills. John Daly, who's on John Daly's the, on the control show, and he's yeah. now on um, I'm Dying Up Here. Yeah, absolutely. He's the best. He's yeah. The best. Yeah. And so, and we had most of our scenes together, and, uh, and Harold Ramis, and just all these. I mean, somebody ha plays Harold Ramis, because that'd be crazy. Harold Ramis is no longer. Okay. A hologram? Um, stop it. Yes, like at the airport. They're like, here's your bag size. You're like, why do I need a hologram woman to tell me what size bag I can carry onto the airplane? Just me? Tight. So... That must be so strange, because all of you, I mean, you, Daly, Mikhail, these are all comedy people who love comedy, and you're playing heroes. Oh, they all heroes. for sure knew who Gilda, I mean, but these I'm, aren't the people I'm talking about who don't know who Gilda is. But it is. must be kind of stressful for everybody to be playing their heroes, or a version of their heroes. Here's what was pretty cool about that, I think for a lot of us, was that I was playing Gilda pre-SNL, so I didn't have to go out there and be like, never mind, and do Rosanna Dana, and do, I did all that for my audition, because I wanted to just be like, hey, I can do all Gilda's characters, or I can try, um, and Emily Latella, and um, all of Gilda's characters from SNL, but this is before that. So there was National Lampoon Radio Hour, and there was uh, The Lemmings, which was this National Lampoon touring live stage show that was super crazy and ahead of its time. Now we'd probably think it was fairly timid, but in the 70s it was like, what the shit are you saying? Like that was not okay stuff to say. And um, so Gilda was in that Second City crew 
that then Lampoon sort of pulled and then SNL then pulled. So it was that same crew just moved from Second City to Lampoon to SNL. And that was that. Was that. So uh, the pressure, um, I feel like I'm sideways answering all these questions, but the, the answer to this one is that the pressure was a te teeny bit less because I wasn't sitting up there in a wig doing Rosanna Dana and people going, I've seen Gilda do that. Can this person do exactly what she did? Where I'm more like, we have similar speaking voices, but she's from Detroit, so you just put her in the back of your throat and just, I am Gilda Radner. She was real tiny and always made herself real small and had the tiniest bit of a lisp and you just sort of put it in the back of your throat and that's just sort of Gilda Radner. And um, that was that and so a tiny bit less pressure. But also the movie is directed by David Wayne who did Wet Hot American Summer and everything else I love. And so I was playing my hero in a movie made by another hero and that pressure in and of itself. But I felt after doing that job, like I was like, oh, I can do stuff. I think we all limit ourselves and we sit there and go like, well, why me? I don't deserve this. How am I gonna do this? And then you do a thing like that and you go like, hmm, I feel like I can. It's liberating. I feel like I am able, like I felt more able coming out of that movie than I did going in. And then after that I got glow and I don't know if that would have ever happened if I didn't come from just, I gave myself chills with a loser. If I came from playing Gilda, I just was like, let's go. Yeah, and I'd imagine Glow was a little bit easier than playing Gilda, your character on Glow. It's not that it was easier. I mean, it, it was, but it was just because I think there's so much of me in Melrose. I mean, I, you know, she's such, she's a party girl, which I am not and like a cigarette smoker, which I am not, and um, drives a white limo, which I do. Um, that would be amazing, and it would be old. That's just the, actually, they have the same car. But we're really similar in that, I think we both overcompensate for insecurities by being like way too loud and way too much for any situation. Um, but I'm trying to get better at it, but I think I was able to pull a lot of myself um, I undercompensate with ins insecurity. Oh. It's an interesting thing. What do you do? Like get smaller? Or get, like, like get sort smaller of... and kind of cynical and kind of like, oh. I don't think that's going to work. I don't care. I, I don't really care about this. I, here's a, there's like a, there is a transition. I used to do that. I used to just be like, it's never going to work. I'm never going to get it. Nobody cares. I've just been doing this so long. I'm tired. And then I think. I'd just go home and watch TV. Leave me alone. Uh-huh. But I, it changed. Now I'm just like, oh, let's go. Mm. Let's do it. Yeah. And that was the guilt. Was that because of Gilda? I think, but I think it was before that. I think I started doing, I was so scared of everything in my 20s. And then I turned 30 and I started doing stand up again. I did stand up as a teenager. I had the, I had balls the size of, what has big balls? Bulls? Yeah, I had bull, I had bull balls. Um, I had, I, okay, all righty, I'm gonna go. But anyway, my point is, like, I had balls of steel. My mom used to joke when I was little that she was just like, we're waiting for her balls to drop, which is really, I mean, if you have any wonder why I am the way I am. Um, but I just was like a fearless kid, and I was acting since I was nine, and I was just like, let's go. I was on auditions, I was like, just felt I was so cool. And then I had done it for so long, by the time I was in my 20s, I was like, which sounds crazy, but I'd been acting since I was nine. So by 25, I'm just exhausted. I'm not getting any jobs. It's just like, what's happening? And it sucks. And then I started doing stand-up again when I turned 30, and then that changed everything. Because then you can get up on stage and just eat. Can I say a bag of dicks on AOL? Yep, oh, absolutely. perfect. Thank you so much. Um, so then you just get on stage and you eat so many bags of dicks that you're just like, oh, well, this... These people couldn't possibly hate me more than I hate myself. And then you, and then you like ultimately go like, oh, this is getting better. I'm growing. I'm a human. And oh wow, I should show some shoulder. I just got a got a little slice of the monitor. You know, it was way too much hair. Um, anyway, you get the point. So then stand up gave me the confidence to then go on auditions and feel like. I have to get this. This is the only thing that's ever going to matter. And if I don't get this, I'll never have money and I can't get health insurance and no one's going to believe in me. And I've been trying this for too long. And how have I not already quit? And that's the crazy repeating cycle that goes on. And then you do something for yourself. And I started touring, started doing musical comedy on the road. And then you're like, wait, I can do other things that fill me up that aren't just waiting for someone else to tell me that I can do a thing. And that really gave me... In Jewish, the word is koyach, 
Isn't that a, ugh, what a, what a beautiful language? Um, which is just like the energy, the verb, the, to feel like I could believe in myself and do it. Can I ask you about a, a, a project, uh, I think from like 2008 that you were in? Because it's Well, a, I might deny it, but go ahead. Uh, return to Sleepaway Camp? Well, it's exactly what I thought you were gonna talk about, and I told you I would deny it, and that was from 2003, and it only came out in 2008. <laughs> Well, I love the original, and it's directed by the guy who directed the original, but I'm sure it's a, it's a say, different process. And when you say you loved the original. Well, it's a cult film. That's what I'm saying. So okay. it's like you love it like you love, what's the one where the Attack of the Killer Tomatoes? Where like you love it, but you're like, you're loving it because you see what it is, and it's just so crazy. And I, we had such a good time on that. Like that was, we were at a sleepaway camp, freezing cold in October, upstate New York, and it was just... It was pretty wacky. And I played like Linda, the bitchy counselor, but it was just so, yeah, look, don't see, I mean, see it. You, you know, live your lives, live your lives. Leave here now and see that. Well, were you a fan of the original? Did you know of the original? I only vaguely knew of it. I mean, we're not gonna give away the end, but it turns out a little girl has a penis. Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry, is that the end? Um, and it was very crazy and disturbing and insane to see when you were little, and luckily I didn't. But then I saw it, even, as a, even when I did that movie and I was like 20 something, and then I saw the original and I was like, oh my God, this is disturbing all these years later. Like children watched this. Um, and then we, yeah, did we did a remake and yeah, we did. Um, yeah, it was cool. It was just, a, that was a very fun job, but just a weird, but again, like as an actor, those are the jobs you get until you start getting the jobs where you can come to AOL Build and wear hot orange pants and just be like, huh? I did a thing. But like, th until then, you're just like, yeah, I'll do a return to Sleepaway Camp 8. Like, let's party, dude. Like, Well, what's so interesting about that is that that is, like you said, one of those jobs that you do while you're sort of working to get one of these yeah. jobs. But that is still- I mean, I'm shaped like a cashew. How fun, I never noticed that, how fun. But that is still an odd one because it's part of a canon of some kind, you know? It's, it's not just like your random sort of some sort of random throwaway slasher movie. It's actually part of like a- So many people this, were so excited yeah. and I didn't know what was going on. And people from Germany, I get emails and they're just like, loved you and returned. I was like, okay, I believe you, but like <laughs> that, I find that to be bizarre, but I thank you. <laughs> I get people really love it. One more, one more of these. Tell me everything. Where do, you, where do you think I have to be? I actually po do. Uwe, Uwe Boll, Postal? Postal? Now I you're just only, being rude. I only ask about this movie because Uwe Boll is a legend as well. He has become this sort of... Uh... He's fun, dude. Really? He is so fun. Also, um, such bad form to ever correct people in a thing, but it is Uva. Uva, Uva excuse me. No, no people that's okay. always say like Yui. I said Uwe. Uwe. It's Uva. Uwe, baby. It's, U I think it's no, Uva, no, Uva. Uva Bull. Can what? I hold more things that say AOL build, please? <laughs> what, did, what was it like working with Uva, Uva, Uva Bull? Uva. Uva, excuse me. Why are you saying Uva? We're best friends. Uva. You have such a nice way about you, it's just crazy. Oh, that is sweet. Yeah, I just find you to be so lovely. I mean, this is a Get moment for here. after, but I'm just telling you. Let's do it now in front of the people. I'm telling you, just like, yeah. you're just so nice to talk to. Oh, I love it. I'm being real. Okay. Um, Uwe was, so Uwe is this insane German director who raises money for his films by, I am not joking, knocking on office doors in Germany and asking people to donate ten, twelve thousand $12,000 at a time. Dentists. <laughs> Should knock on a mic, that was really off color. I'm very sorry, sound. Um, so he's like, ooh! Um, but yeah, so there's like, and he went around, he, I think he raised, and I am not joking, I can't remember now, this is a huge discrepancy between numbers, somewhere between 10 and 20 million dollars by going around Germany and just being like, hi, a little money. That's not a German accent, but do you know what I mean? So uh, we got, we did that movie, it wasn't even low budget. We shot in Vancouver for two months. It was the best experience ever. It was based on a video game called Postal. And I played like the female sort of Lara Croft character and I had like a machine gun and a mini Catholic school girl skirt and the whole thing was just a trip and we couldn't have had more fun. The movie is so deeply offensive that I can't even believe it exists. I cringe 
Like the parts that are offensive, I'm not in and didn't really know about them. And they added a lot of them after. And a lot of the actors were like, wouldn't have maybe done this if I knew about the plane crash. Yeah. So things like kind that. Of thing that's like a satire without someone getting this what's satirical about it <laughs> in the making of it. You know, there's like a twist that's missing to the to the, to a lot of the humor. That is correct. And that may very well be a language barrier, my friend. Right. So, but that said, like, Uva's the kindest, coolest guy. He does a thing where um, critics, he would bo- boxes he boxes them. the critics. So he's a professional boxer in Germany and a movie director. And if someone talks shit about him, he's like, put your money where your mouth is, kid in your basement who's anonymous, who thinks you could just talk shit about people and no one's going to see you. Come fight me. And he will fight. He beat the shit out of, like, a young... He got such... Um, crap for it because he beat up like a 20 year old kid <laughs> but the kid was like talking so much smack about Uva and he was like come fight me and the kid said okay so he was like you got in this ring and he pulverized <laughs> and, then, and then Postal came out and I was like hi so happy to be here <laughs> like it's <laughs> Thank you so much for having me. And this is why I have to ask about him, because he's a person that garners he is incredible so stories. And honestly, he's a brilliant man. Yeah. He's like a doctor in literature. He's just incredible. He's so layered as a human being. And he says a lot of really inappropriate stuff. But he's like a good, he's a good dude, believe it or not. Oh, I believe it. Yeah, he's kind of great. Let's get some questions uh, from the audience. Who has a question? Right here. Hi, Jackie. Hi, what's your name? I'm Trey. Hi, Trey. I love Glow. I love the show in general. And Genji Cohen happens to be one of my favorite writers right now. I loved Weeds. I loved Orange is the New Black. And I know she's involved with this show. So I was wondering what it was like to work with such an eccentric creator, although you just described a pretty eccentric one yourself that you just worked with. Yes. um, How does Genji compare to Uwe? Uh, well, there have never been two more different people on the entire planet. Um, but Genji, um, Genji is our executive producer and was one of the writers. Obviously, she wrote um, episode six. But she, um, she wasn't there that much because she was working on uh, Post and Orange and working on 8 million other things. But she's incredible and she's kind and she was in there for all the auditions and just so supportive. And normally I think with someone as powerful as her, you'd be in a room and you'd just be like, uh, the thought, the visual I have is like your butthole sews itself closed. You're just like, oh my God, I'm so nervous. I don't even know how to live. But she's there and she's like rainbow hair and she's just this like kind of really casual Jewish lady from Brooklyn. And she's just like, I like that. Can we try it? Like she's just so in her body and comfortable with herself that you're comfortable around her contrary to what you would think because I too love weeds and love orange and everything she ever did and know that she was one of the youngest writers on Fresh Prince when she was 24. Like I know, her, yeah, her, um, her credits go back. And so when you're around someone like that, but David Wayne was the same way, not to change the question, but you're around a hero. Like you're generally, you're like, oh, this person is the end all but they're so cool and calm and supportive of the people that they're working with that it makes it it calms you down as an actor so it's also different for uh interesting for david wayne though because as much as a hero is he's making a kind of scrappy semi-low budget movie about these people so it's not like he has the time to really act like the king of kings around anybody and he's He's done and even if he had the time and energy to do that that is so not his vibe the king of king vibes he is just like he's just around like, he's the most chill, yeah. He's, he's got to get the work done and get mm-hmm. everybody else to do their but work. But that's the same with Glow. Yeah. Like, Glow season one, like, I mean, a Netflix show on its first season, it's not like we're the biggest budget. We're not Transformers. We're over there, like, scrapping shit together and, like, just trying to make it happen and working insanely long hours. I realize it's, it's like not migrant labor. most of the show. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, and we're just going. And then it, we're shooting episode one, we get the script for episode two. You got to prep it, it starts the next day. It's like, there's no... There's no break. There's no, and it was incredible. And it was, and we did um, a month of training with wrestling legend Chavo Guerrero beforehand. So we knew how to do. What's what your favorite we move? Um, I, I guess it's not really a move, but it turned out I was really good at like back bumps and front bumps where you just go from standing. Like, so someone can just um, get, like clothesline you and you just 
fall flat on your back. And it's like, it's counterintuitive because you're like, I'm going to die. My spinal cord's going to break. But then you just do it. And you're like, well, I guess I just did it. So your um, move, <laughs> my so move your is, move falling. is falling. On your but what's amazing, yes, yes. But also what's amazing, no, I also, um, I also like um, clothes lies and body slams and um, turnbuckle sandwiches because I like, I like the stuff that looks dramatic. Like someone just throws you from across the ring into the turnbuckle and you just bite it. Do you ever have any injuries? Someone fell on my ankle on the very, very, very last day of shooting, and I was in pink sequins and fishnets and silver leather boots up to here, and they wheel, and I, and I got rushed to the hospital. So I show up at the hospital. I look like a drag queen. I'm just like, hi, I'm head of lettuce. Like, who? What's happening? And I was just crying, and I had jewels glued to my face. And I was like, I'm in pain. And they cut me out of the fishnets. It turned out I was fine, and it was like a really bad sprain, and then I... I was like, please hurry, and they rushed me back to work, and then I shot the rest of the day sitting. <laughs> Wrestling sitting. See you guys later. No, but I, they, um, we were able to work it out because it was just like, it was literally the last day of shooting, and it was the last day of work, so it was fine. Next question. Hi. Hi. So I know that you worked on Sisters. How, what was that like working on that movie and with Tina and Amy? Awesome. Thank you. Um, it was it was amazing. Uh, that movie was so cool because, well, for a million reasons. But I I actually tried out for Kate McKinnon's part, and then they called me and they were like, "We have this smaller part to play the DJ, and she's in the whole movie, and you'd shoot three weeks, and um, Kate's gonna do that other part. And do you want to do this part?" And I was like, "Sure." It's Tina and Amy. It's Bobby Moynihan. Like three weeks. Yeah. Three weeks, New York. Like a, honestly, as an actor, and it sounds. I don't know if it sounds good or bad to say, but it's like, it's very, very satisfying as an actor to have a job. That just sounds, but it's like. I talked to someone yesterday. People and they are like, told what's me... the best part about this whole thing? And I was like, hey, bro, I'm employed. Yeah. Do you want to take it down a notch? Because I have a job. Like, that's the, that's not the most exciting thing. The, obviously, the most exciting thing is the women and the empowerment and the camaraderie and the friendships we've created. But also to have a job. <laughs> you know, like in parentheses, quieter at the end. I talked to someone yesterday who was making fun of an actor that they had just met because they were like, oh, they're in like a Bud Light commercial. And I was like, that's a job. Do you know how Bud much Light a Bud Light commercial would pay? I did, yeah. That was the only way I made a living from 2012 to 2015. I did commercials. And by the way, before that, all I did was try to get commercials that nobody put me in. So it's like, that's not, that's nothing to shake a stick at. You can make some ched. But to kind of answer the sister's question, it was so dope. And Tina and Amy are just the loveliest people. Um, very different vibes. Amy's more of like a playful person and Tina's more of like just a businesswoman and getting the job done, but both just obviously hilarious and incredible women and became real friendly with Bobby, who is, you know, the nicest, but just the funniest. Like to know someone who makes you so funny you want to vomit is just like a weird... I happen to know a lot of people who are so funny they make me want to vomit, but Bobby is... I feel like I've seen, I've seen him uh, perform live and I've seen him in other stuff outside of SNL and movies. And I've always found that SNL, as, as great as he was on it, never found like the spot with him where it was no, like, you are uncle? so fun. That's true, yeah. Just, I mean, I, the way he shapes his mouth for Drunk Uncle. Also, I mean, this is no, there's so many sketches of his that I love, but I agree with you. I've seen him do stuff live and in person, you're just like, and he has the best stories. He is like a photographic memory for these SNL stories and he'll just sit there and regale. And it's not a situation where you're like, okay, we've heard it. It's like, wait, what happened then? And then you wore Chris Farley's pants, but then Farley realized they said Belushi in the tag. And so you wore Farley's pants that were Belushi's pants. Like everyone's hanging on his every word. I keep catching myself in the monitor and being terrified of the memes. Oh, that monitor yes, right there. Yes, because I'm like, I make faces. I'm very Oh, animated. no. Okay, well, we have time mom. for one more question, ah! and then we'll pull you out of the hell of that monitor. So No, I'm having the best time. I'm in orange pants. Hey. <laughs> Do you have a favorite song off the Glow soundtrack? Oh, wow. I mean, hard no, so I'm so sorry to tell you. Yeah, I mean, I am the warrior. I think just the theme song gets me every time. But I don't... You know, there's a... There's this weird thing where the first time I was able to watch the whole series, and truly I need to watch it again. I've only watched the whole thing through um, once, but I've watched the first five episodes a few times. And the first time I watched it, I just was like, my friends have shiny eyes. Like, I just, my experience of it was like, Allie's pretty. <gasps> Gail, she's being so, wow, set. Like, I just was looking at my friends and loving them, and I, like, wasn't following the story. I just was like, it, it was like I almost, 
I wasn't experiencing as it, experiencing it as a TV show. Well, it's really hard to do with something that you were a part of. I've never had to do it before. And so on, when you're watching movies, you're like, oh, cool. Like, and I've had little parts and things here and there. But now that I'm really in a thing and part of a thing, it takes a second to process what's going on. Well, it's that thing of like, oh, I remember this day. And that's weird that the, I remember a better oh, take than this. Oh, or I remember like she 100%. fell down. Yeah. Oh, funny. I hated that leotard when I put it on it. It actually doesn't look so bad. Or, oh, that looks so much worse. You know, whatever, whatever it is, whatever the thing is that you were in your insecure, dumb head about that day, you're just, it's not even a thing. It's like, you're Look just, at you on the poster. I like. mean, but I'm very lucky I got to do my press with Kia because Kia is from WWE and she is a famous professional wrestler named Awesome Kong. So sorry. So we were doing our press and our photos and she was like, well, what do you want to do? And I was like, you know, just... What looks good? <laughs> and she was like, oh, I know what I'll do. And honestly, I'm failing us right now because I don't know what that's called. And I would, would it be really dope to pull it out right now, but I'll text Kia and ask. But she was like, it's going to look crazy, so go, jump. And she's so much taller than me. And she's like, I got you. Just jump and land the front of your thighs on the front of my thighs. And I was like, I don't know what that means. How do you land a front thigh on a front thigh? Like, how do you, what? It, yeah. So she's standing up and she bends down and I just jump into that position and she just catches me. And oh she's God. so sturdy that I just was like, I'm a baby and I'm, at, and I'm fine and I'm safe. But then they were like, make a face like it hurts. And then I made a face like it hurts. <laughs> you know, and that's another thing with wrestling, which is so exciting is the person, I'm making her look amazing. Yeah. She told me what to do, but I'm making her look like Hercules. I could be going like this, and she would look weak, but, and she does that too, because she's stronger, obviously, than any of us, um, although all these girls can kick ass, so the point is, Kia's a professional wrestler, so she, when one of us throws her an elbow, or tries to, you know, tries to body slam her, she'll go down, and she'll take it, and she'll wince, and she'll make a face, and we look like warriors, because we got her down, and one of her things is awesome, Kong, is she would walk, and women, other lady wrestlers, would run into her with all their might and just fall. And just, she would just walk. It, so, and, and the whole thing was that no one, you couldn't get her down. And two or three people would have to take her. Now, if she wanted to, she could have fallen when one of them came at her. But that's, that's not the game and the choreography of wrestling. It's crazy. Jackie. It's been lovely talking to you. Wow. I All should the know. compliments should, were know. wonderful that you <gasps> threw my way. I really appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, Glow is on Netflix now, mm -hmm. right? All mm -hmm. 10 episodes, right? All 10 episodes All are 10. on Netflix right now. If you haven't watched them, watch them. They're so wonderful. And when does the, when, do, when do we get to see you play Gilda Radner? We don't have an official release date um, for... The movie's called A Feudal and Stupid Gesture, and it's about the creation and going to say downfall, but of the man who created National Lampoon. And I'm thinking early 2018 is the, are the murmurs. So give us a minute. Don't rush us. Jackie Town, everybody. Thank Jackie, you guys thank you are so the much. best. This is so nice.